Well, hello there again. Good evening. Uh, I just thought that I'd make two uh, videos, one after the other, just to cut into uh, time and so that my old ass brain does not forget some of this information that I've always wanted to put out for the last few months now. So a few weeks ago, I created a video, I guess a friend of mine, high school classmate of mine back home in the Philippines, uh, so as a few of my friends, and I do believe a big portion, uh, majority of my country, not because of my doing, um, are well aware of what's um, happening with our next door neighbor, China, and how it is spiraling out of control uh, with confrontations, although not armed, God forbid, you know, uh, with the Chinese People's Liberation Army slash Navy. Their army is actually the one in control of its whole military. The Navy is just a part of their army, right? Which is their Navy, unlike the United States, which has three different branches. That being said, um, if you have not been following on what's been going on the last few months, or even the last two plus years, uh, my country of birth have now aligned with its old colonial master, the United States. And it's not like they had a choice. It was up and coming. I was foreseeing it about to happen with confrontational tactics uh, being delivered by China to our hapless Navy, the Philippine Navy, with, with what it's, what's left of it. It's not much. <laughs> It's a David and Goliath thing, and it is really troublesome uh, and, and quite uh, heartbreaking to see my country of birth, fellow Filipinos, battling a foe that is uncontainable to a point where it has been allowed by the Chinese government to literally steal natural resources of our very noses. Uh, of the sovereignty uh, of the Philippines, uh, of the Philippines, literally, and the international court couldn't do anything about it. Uh, it's quite unfortunate that the only uh, recourse to these events is deal force with force. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, we prepare for the worst case eventuality of war. Uh, Philippines, it just doesn't have the capacity to wage war. It's not rich enough to purchase the machines, the hardware, the tanks, the ship. In this matter, it, it, it's going to be a naval uh, a conflict. And we just don't even have the hulls to compete with China more so the technology so here comes good old united states my last video i created um i kind of dove into the uh numbers missiles vertical launch systems aircraft hull ships what are the advantages disadvantages and basically who's going to come ahead uh we're going to suffer casualties but that is war if we're not prepared to do so then you're not prepared to go to it and I believe in our men and women, our sailors, our service members that are ready to uh, fight with whatever ship, command that they are stationed at. But that's not the end of it. Uh, this is a very lengthy discussion on how we could contain China. It is not a matter of the amount of ships, which we, have, we are at a disadvantage by about 100 hulls. <laughs> By the amount of aircraft, which we are at a disadvantage, given again the number of quantity that they have, uh, and the amount of missiles that are pointed directly towards those ships, quantity-wise. But we also have an advantage over our the amount of vertical launch systems we have, the capability of our ability to send them out under towards a target. Where that comes into play is uh, the amount of ships that are able to launch them. 
because all our ships are worldwide. The Chinese only have to muster what they have in the South China Sea. Our advantage is also in our numerical and quantitative, qualitative superiority of our nuclear power submarines, which the Chinese just cannot detect. They have no way to detect it, nor do they have a capable anti-submarine warfare program. Though what we have an advantage on is combined arms. China has never fought a war since the late 70s, since I do believe 1978. Uh, and they lost. They got their ass whooped uh, by Vietnam, which is their dire enemy, right? Number one enemy, actually. And they got their ass sent back across the border. And ever since then, they've been trying to rebuild, and they rebuild they have. Now, are they capable of battling us one-on-one -on, -one on the high seas with about 200 plus years, 250 years of experience dealing with seamanship, 100 plus years of aircraft carrier operations, and uh, 120 years of submarine operations? No, they don't. And to top it off, they are not capable and nor do they have the experience of combined arms, meaning the mustering of all available resources to, for intelligence, uh, targeting, acquisition, and engagements of all available assets, not just Navy, uh, everything. And they do not have the capability to integrate all of those into a viable mission, unlike our armed forces. That comes into play because if we go into conflict with China, the United States Navy is not going to fight by itself. What it means is that the United States Air Force are going to be there. The United States Marine Corps, which is under the umbrella of the United States Navy operationally, is going to be there. And the United States Army. Uh, again, this is going to be a naval and air conflict. So the Army is probably going to be relegated into different hotspots. Uh, probably going to be staying in South Korea, Japan, and uh, a few... Uh, 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 regiments are probably going to be in the Philippines, right? Controlling those choke points for China. Now, if you combine all those resources, especially aircraft, we totally got them outgunned, outnumbered, all right? Uh, United States Air Force with 72 B-52H Stratofortices, heavy bombers, and 60 plus B-1 Lancers, and a dozen B-2 uh, stealth bombers. Is it a dozen or two dozen? I'm, I'm confused now. Well, okay, let's just keep it to a dozen, right? That's about 140 plus aircraft total. With launch bays that are capable of launching their standoff Tomahawks, uh, JSOWs, joint standoff weapon systems, uh, JDAMs, joint direct attack munitions, a number of gravity bombs, which probably are not going to be used, that's pointless, and nuclear weapons. Which, we want to keep this conventional. I get it, I get it, all right? So, if you combine those with the uh, Naval Air Force assets, that's more than enough to uh, bottleneck China into between Taiwan and the mainland China. What we don't have are intermediate-range ballistic missiles because when we signed that treaty with Russia in the 80s, we took away that capability of ours ever producing it. Uh from the Pershing II weapon systems that, which was a neutron weapon, we should have kept those, but now we don't have any, all the way to a uh, long range Tomahawk cruise, uh, ground launch cruise GLCMs, right? Which we don't have. So we have to rely on platforms that can fly a thousand miles, hit China and come on back, which we don't have. Yes, we don't have those. So we have to rely on Air Force air power, long range bombers, uh, and probably F-15 E-Strike Eagles, which are capable of launching from uh, bases in Japan, uh, South Korea, and now the Philippines to hit targets in China and come back. Yeah? That being said, the United States Marine Corps is also garrisoned on a rotational basis on this island chain. Now, if you look at the map, you start from the north, from Japan... Uh, all the way down to Okinawa, all the way down now to the Philippines, 
in South Korea, we have Marine Corps personnel that are on a rotational basis able to in, uh, uh, insert themselves into these choke points, bottleneck, create a log jam for Chinese warships to where even in the whole South China Sea, in the Western Pacific, they are now becoming targets from land. Okay? So, the addition of the Philippines as an ally and willingly allowing United States military personnel to rotate in and out for training. There are no permanently stationed military personnel of the United States in the Philippines. And I think this is a big plus, a win-win situation for both parts, especially the Philippines, which uh, had used... Uh, and my, my, you know, I, 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 I feel it to the bottom of my heart that the only reason why uh, there was a uh, 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 misunderstandings through all those decades was because American service members were not being punished for the crimes that they were committing um, on Philippine soil, and they were being extradited back home to the United States, which had created a a, a, a log jam of heartaches that the New People's Army had used against the Philippine government to extract both military bases out of there in the uh, early 90s. And it was heartbreaking because it just allowed the Philippine government to sink down the drain with its military capability and allow China to grow in the next 25 years to where we're at right now. But now we're back and an island hopping campaign part 2 2.0 as compared to World War II when um, uh, MacArthur uh, uh, came back and liberated the Western Pacific from the Japanese. But now it's a different matter because I don't think we are straying off course. I think we've learned from what happened uh, in World War II in the Pacific Theater that we cannot surrender the Western Pacific to China. And the addition of the Philippines as an ally had brought those resources back to bear with our limited resources in the Western Pacific. It is truly amazing. Uh, now we have very competent war fighting allies. The Japanese uh, with the Japanese, with their Navy and Air Force, the South Koreans with their Navy, Air Force and Army. You have to understand, we all think that, do I even have an Arleigh Burke? Yes, I do. These are Arleigh Burke destroyers right here, right? Uh, I actually served on one, my last command on one of them in Japan, against John F. McCain. Uh, we all think that they are the top of the line in the world. Well, compared to Russia, we are. But in the Pacific, we are actually, we have the fourth best. Is that even the right term to use? The fourth best. A guided missile destroyer in Asia. Yeah. Number one is South Korea. Number two is the Japanese. Uh, I, I, I don't know which class it is, but I've been reading all this information. They have better technology than an Arleigh Burks. Well, the Type 3, I think, uh, has the best, but we only have a few right now. I think two or three. Uh, and they're both in the Western Pacific. And the third one is the Chinese. Uh, because Simply because ours are old, man. Our, our hulls are old. The one I served in is uh, 30 plus years old, going to be 30. I served on her 20 years ago. Okay. So, so that being said, uh, we have we have very competent and war capable. And I need to say that word allies, uh, because the conflict in the Western Pacific is going to be a sea and air dominant conflict, with support from the land which would require long-range missiles to hit their targets. And you know, we are capable of hitting a target that is moving, that is changing its geophysical location every second. We are. I don't think the Chinese is capable of doing that. They even have problems targeting our aircraft carriers. So anyway, that being said, you combine the capability of our allies, you combine the ability of our allies to be stationed where they need to be, you combine our ability to preposition ourselves in any of these locations to, to provide choke points for the Philippine, uh, People's Liberation Army Navy 
And what do you have? An ability by the U.S. Air Force to strike from points where they cannot strike back at their bombers. As long, and you know, we're not even talking about what the Navy is doing now with drones, undersea, uh, oversea, over air, right? We have the capability to track every one of their assets, search, uh, prepare a package of targets, and strike those targets. As long as we keep our heads up, hopefully we don't get there. But the next conflict in the Western Pacific with what we have, I think, is more than enough. Now, we have to address our issues in the next few years, 5 to 10 years, with sh shipbuilding and reassert our dominance quantitatively. The Chinese are not going to stop. They have one shipyard that could, that could actually manufacture more ships than our six combined public shipyards in the whole country. Think about that. And they have six. That's just one shipyard. Right, so we, we cannot rest. Their 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 mission is to retake Taiwan. We have to help Taiwan. If not, there goes democracy. There goes the country. There goes the trust we built for the whole world to see for the last two hundred fifty years, two hundred forty nine years, really. Okay, so we need to win. We need to learn our lesson, and we need to prepare. And that's how we're going to win the war in the South China Sea. So choke points, experience, allies, combined arms. All right? All right, amigos? So hopefully you uh, understood everything that I said. I know it was a lot compared to the first video. This is now totaling, I don't know, we are now at our 17th minute. Oh, my God, that's a lot. And uh, one of these days, I'm going to come back home. And I'm, uh, I'm excited to see what it's like to uh, re-experience the culture that I grew up on. And to our friends back home, do not be alarmed. Do not be disgusted. What you don't see in the background doesn't mean there's nothing happening in the background. right? I kind of know what's going on back here. And now we're preparing for it. So, para po sa aking mga kababayan, Sa akin po pinanganakan ng bansa, uh, gabi na po ngayon dito at uh, ako po ay nagagalak na tayo po ay nagkakaroon ng prediksyon through social media. Huwag niyo po ay patuloy ang pagpapadala ng mga inyong mga tanong upang ako po ay makapaglingkod. Uh, may miss ko na po kayo. Uh, to, and to all my friends, whether you're home or not, God bless you. To all our service members, men and women out there doing their jobs for deployed, deployed, um, active duty, there's a reason why myself and a fellow of our retired uh, folks get to do what they do is because you do what you get to do. So we all love you. It's been a pleasure, a privilege, and an honor. You guys enjoy the evening, and we'll see you guys soon when you come on home. Post.